We've successfully transitioned the first part of our system into the functional core imperative shell paradigm. The make move function is completely stateless and isolated. That's part of our functional core. And the next thing we're going to do is see how we can integrate that into our imperative shell, which is going to be our view interactivity or reactivity layer. Before we do that, I've written a test to make sure we don't break anything. You can see here I'm using view test utils to test the application from the user point of view, which doesn't really care about the implementation, whether it's a functional core imperative shell or full of global variables and, and uh, mutation. So what we've done here is just mounted the application. We're then making three moves and asserting the three moves are correctly updated in the DOM. And this is currently passing because we haven't changed any of our implementation at all. So let's go ahead and see how we can integrate our new make move function into our existing imperative shell. The first thing we're going to do is come down into our imperative shell, the use tic-tac-toe composable. And inside of here, we're going to attempt to update this to use our new make move function. So to get the new state, we're not going to do this horrible mutation. What we're going to do instead is use our new make move function. So we're going to call make move in here. The first argument is the current board. So it's going to be current board dot value. We also need to pass in the column, the row and the counter. So we're going to pass in column and row. We already have those. And the counter is just going to be current counter dot value. We need to make sure these variables are available. At the moment, current board is not available here. So we're going to go ahead and declare that one. It's currently declared down here in the bottom. So I'm just going to cut this one and move it up above this function to make it available. This does make it a global variable. This is kind of unavoidable at some point. We do need to have this mutation happening. So I'm going to do it up here. We are going to still need to return this one. So I'm going to jump down to the bottom of my composable here and just return the current board variable in there. Let's go ahead now and save this off and everything should be failing and of course, so it is. We're actually getting a maximum call stack size exceeded error. What's happening here is I have a make move function here, which is calling another function called make move. It's just calling itself over and over again. What I'm going to do is remove this, uh, rename this one to be called move. And then we're going to return this down the bottom in our composable. So let's jump down there and do that. We're just going to change this one to be make move and that's going to be equal to our move function. Let's save this one off and that error should now be gone and everything is surprisingly still passing. What's happening here is we're creating our new state by passing in our existing board. We're returning a brand new updated state and then all we're doing is pushing it into our existing boards. We actually don't need this mutation here at all. I'm going to delete that one, save it off and everything is still passing. We've managed to isolate our business logic in this make move function and we're updating everything here in our imperative shell. There's still a, bit, a little bit too much mutation for my liking. I believe things like changing the current counter and possibly the current move are actually part of the business logic, not part of the UI layer. So I'm actually going to update my make move function to be a little bit more intelligent and return the new value for current counter as well as current move. And that's a refactor we're going to make in the next lecture. We can see one of the real benefits of tests here though. We were able to update our game entirely and everything is still working correctly, despite not even heading over to the browser. Let's go over to the browser nonetheless and make sure everything is still working. And you can see it currently is working. Undo and redo might not be working at the moment. Apparently it still works as well. So definitely a good place to be. Let's continue to the next lecture and continue updating our implementation to make it as, as functional as possible and separate all of our business logic from our UI concerns.